We have in the United States, especially in Hollywood, a coterie of wealthy mystics who have made the Dalai Lama into a kind of a hobby. Uh, on the other hand, though, remember, the United States regards Tibet as an integral part of China. That has never changed. And the inherent problem that the Dalai Lama has is he, he, he says, I'm a religious leader. But, of course, he was the head of this uh, regime in, in uh, Tibet up until about 1959. Uh, he has this past record of having participated in all of these CIA operations. Well, I, 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 has the Hollywoodization of the Dalai Lama in Tibet actually hurt their case? Because it's, the, it's not this idyllic place. It never really was. And so, you know, everyone, there's this expectation of the Dalai Lama and what, you know, Americans and Europeans, uh, they worship something that doesn't exist, never did. And it affects politics. I think you're right. The, well, the, the Hollywood mystical community is, is convinced that there was this Shangri-La, a golden age, where everybody lived in harmony with nature, where there was no conflict. And, of course, Tibetan history is anything but. The reality we see is a manorial system. In other words, it's something that you had in Western Europe in the Dark Ages with serfs, about 75% of the population being serfs, maybe 5% actual slaves in households usually, uh, a tiny class, about 200 families controlling 93% of the wealth, maybe four or 500 people actually running the society, being the beneficiaries, and a very, very onerous regime. It was a brutal feudal theocracy with the favorite punishments were mutilation, mutilation of the eye, the hand, the foot, the tongue, uh, and all kinds of travel reporters going to Tibet in the 50s and 60s would report the large presence of people in marketplaces who had their hands or, or other limbs cut off. So this is what it was. This was not spiritual. Uh, this is a myth, essentially, which has appealed to people from from Heinrich Himmler, who sent a, an expedition yes. to Tibet all the way to Richard Gere and, and Sharon Stone. Uh, and it is simply a myth. And we cannot base the foreign policy of the United States on a myth tinged with mysticism about Shangri-La. And that is, unfortunately, what a very significant group in the Democratic Party wants to do. And if I go back to you in Brussels, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's very interesting, I mean, being a China expert, in your opinion, are the majority of the people in Tibet, do they prefer communist rule or do they prefer the feudalism that they had under the Dalai Lama before the um, uh, Chinese army well, brought it back under uh, Beijing's control? What would you think the choice is? Well, well, well uh, there is no doubt, as I was saying, that the standards of living uh, are for everyone to see, and especially for those people who lived through the, the ancient um, um, the period of feudum, I mean the older people, there was no comparison. As my colleague was saying, there was a, as a lot of um, uh, cruelties and uh, atrocities uh, committed under the, the, the old regime. I think that th this is why China is so angry, um, uh, because uh, China has indeed done a great deal um, um, to improve the standards of living uh, in, uh, of the Tibetan people through, the, th through all these years, according to the UN Development Indexes. Um, but in spite of that, um, it's, 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 uh, the, the West seems to be painting China as a kind of oppressive regime, bringing all, uh, nothing but misery to the uh, dependent people. This is simply Andrew, not you, you true. Bring up a very good, then, then Andrew, you bring up a good uh, point there. I mean, but it's civil society in America and in Europe that are saying this all of the time. And what I'm meaning, not real experts, it's just these people that have this illusion about a place. People will, will send out a, a website, yeah, yeah. make a comment, and, you know, and they t just yeah. believe right, everything right. they hear and yeah. read, and not from authoritative yeah. people. Yeah. Well, that's well, this brings me to my second point, which is that, um, uh, that, that the reason for the anger is that um, there are a lot of the, uh, the people in the West uh, who haven't been to Tibet, or if they have been to Tibet, they've been there as a tourist, or have lived there for um, a week or, or at most a couple of months, and they seem to be, you know, sort of uh, experts on, on Tibet and, <laughs> and, and, and taking up their, 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 their baton for, for what is basically a myth. So that's the, 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 the anger. But on the other hand, the reality, you quite po uh, rightly pointed out, that that is a civil society, that's the media. You know, the West. 